الشبات حول القيامة وردوا عليها نحمد ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير آمين يا رب العالمين Today in our time together we will see some objections You see the word shubahat Doubts, questions, you know, allegations people have about hawl al qiyama. What is the meaning of word meaning of qiyama? The day of judgment, the day of standing that we have talked about. The minor signs we saw, we saw the major signs, and wa raddu alayha and their answers. So, in the attempt to be prepared and not be scared, today is a day to sit with lots and lots of prayers for ourselves. That may Allah subhanahu wa taala enable us to see what is right as right and give us the ability to follow it, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala enable us to see wrong as wrong and give us the ability to avoid it. You know what doubt does when somebody is in doubt. So, if let's say you have you have these two pencils here, right? So these are like two lines; they're going straight. If I just tilt a little bit one of them, do you think this was, will ever meet? No. This will just the distance will keep on increasing and increasing. And this is what doubt does. This is what you know. Uh, uh, it it makes you know delay possible, and then eventually it takes you to divide. That's why when we grab the Quran, it says "Zalik al Kitabu la Roibafi." There is no doubt in it. So, insha Allah, today ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah make me as of those who are very confident. Make me of those who read to succeed. Because when we have, you know, doubts, when we have questions about something, what should we do? We should learn about ourselves. We should educate. We should educate ourselves, and that's how. we will get to know what we need to do okay so go ahead and write in your note in your notebooks that i need to live a life of no doubt i need to live a life of certainty okay and that will help us on the day of judgment inshallah so once again what is my goal knowing these shubhat is that you know you hear these very common when you walk out as ambassador of islam when you will be a learned person and you will pay attention to what's going on around the world you will be hearing these comments you will be hearing these questions and at that time should i be answering them based on my own judgment should it be just kilo qal so and so said this so and so said that or should i base my answers on solid grounds which option do you choose one or two random answers or answers on solid ground number 2 yeah. right and for that we have to educate ourselves with the quran and sunnah so as soon as we go to the quran in surah al isra in verse number 49 to 51 we hear one of the claim right away wa qalu a idha kunna idhaman wa rufata And they say, after will we become bones and dust? Shall we be raised from the dead in a new act of creation? Khalqan jadida? Will we be created anew? I want you to talk to people. Ask them. You know, some people they are so educated. They will sit with you. They will have hours of SME sessions with you. They will tell you about insurance plans. They can tell you about health, fitness. You talk to them about financial stability. You talk to them about housing. You talk to them about careers. They are so well versed. But as soon as you ask them, what is your belief after that? What will happen to you after that? It's like a pause, and they are like, yeah, yeah. It's it's you know, many of them feel, oh, it's nothing. We just you know die. Some of them, even you will hear some people, they they, they still believe in like seven lives of the cats and things like that, or we'll come back in a different form. So here there are some questions, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives the answers. Qul kunu hijaratan aw hadida aw khalqan mimma yakburu fi sudurikum, fasa yakuluna mayu iduna. الذي فتركم أول مرة فسينغضون إليك رؤوسهم ويقولون متى هو قل عسى أن يكون قريبا. Now the question is, did I understand what it meant? Do I understand what it said? What what is the answer Allah Subhanahu wa Taala giving? 
Mm -hmm. So if we are not able to understand that, I really want us to pause and think of our life that I need to come to a level where I can see the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I should be able to know what it means. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in these verses that you will be raised from the dead even though you be stones or any other substance. You know, there is a culture, what they do is they burn the bodies, they cremate them, and they turn those ashes and they turn it into beautiful stones that you can wear. Like, you know, your loved ones, it turns into like stones. Have you ever seen like some people have the urns on their mantelpiece? They have these ashes. Some of them, they turn into a stone and something. And they say like, we're not coming back. This is all like, you know, I have the remain. Allah says, I'll bring you back even if it's, you know, that stone. And um, do your minds appear yet farther removed from life? And thereupon they say, who is that will bring us back to life? Say to them, he who has brought you into being in the first instance. Who made you for the first time? He's going to be the one who is going to make you second time. So what was the doubt number one? What was the doubt number one? When after that our bones will get decomposed and mixed in the earth, who will put us to life again? And what is the answer? He who has brought you into being in the first instance, then same will bring you into being the second time. Right? Inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can understand and apply that in our life that this is not a YOLO. You know, like there's a slogan that says Y-O-L-O. -O. Go ahead and write down, note down with you and search it, Google it. You only live once. So eat, drink, be merry, have fun, right? No, it's not YOLO. We, we were created by Allah SWT in this life and we will be created again. How shall we put to life again after our death is another question these people have. And what did Allah SWT tell us? He who has brought the human into being out of nothing will create the human again. This question is posed in Surah Al-Maryam and how وَيَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ أَإِذَا مَا مِتُّ لَسَوْفَ أُخْرَجُ حَيَّا And man, the disbeliever, he says, When I am dead, shall I then be raised up alive? أَوَلَا يَذْكُرُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ does not man remember that we created him before while he was nothing? So I want you to think about your creation. Think about it. You know, if you look at the tree outside, you know, right now, like in fall season, what happens? It loses all the leaves. Some of the plants, they become just like bare bones. You will just see the sticks. Like if you look at the hydrangea plant, um, or there are many others that Allah SWT show us the life cycle of a human on this plant in a year. So it just becomes like so dead. You look at these sticks and some you know, people will do that. They will bring a bone and laugh to the Prophet that how can Allah bring us back you know, from this. So who created us for the first time? who designed us, fashioned us, he is fully capable of making us again. I want you to search, look it up, the golden ratio. Okay, look it up, what is golden ratio? And you will see that my face here, from this part to this part, to this part to this part, I divide, it's the same. My hand all the way from here, if you divide from up to this ankle, it's the same. So there's a terminology called golden ratio and everything will fall into it to the point that you will see that Makkah, Kaaba is at the golden ratio of the world. SubhanAllah. Why? Because the creator who created me and you, that's his house. And he made us for the first time and he is fully capable of making us again. If you look at this skeleton right at our hip bone, there is something called a coccyx bone so that will be like a seed on the day of judgment and when it's just you know when the rain falls down the trees and vegetation start growing up this bone will you know it will regenerate and the humans will be created back from it so if you search scientifically also you will see those evidences in place inshallah now allah almighty will never put dead bodies into life this was the objection and what did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them hmm? Yes, you can. You can write these objections because this is what you're going to be hearing left and right when you interact with the society at large, when you meet the atheists, when you meet, you know, people who have different faith and beliefs. These are the questions they have. Are these, are these adults of uh, Huh? Say it again. Are these doubts and clarification? These are doubts and clarification. So the top one is the doubt. 
it's the objection that the uh, that the kuffar like those who disbelieve are making sometimes you know like last night we had a person from a high school he accepted islam 17 year old boy he accepted islam in front of the mush you know in front of the whole congregation so these people they have genuinely these questions and if we educate them correctly if we educate them with sincerity it can open doors for them it can put all the entire thing into a jigsaw puzzle you know why this is happening so much trauma around in the world so much going on some people really get upset you know on the creator like why all this is happening but all they need to do all me and you need to do is educate ourselves and help others be educated why because allah has promised to rise dead bodies up again and to fulfill his promise is upon allah almighty so you might have heard this statement it's not fair so you know what everything is fair in the kingdom of allah subhanahu ta'ala if something is happening good there is going to be a hisab and if there is something not happening good there still will be a hisab there will be accountability and questions on the day of judgment in surah an-nahl they swear by allah their strongest oaths that allah will not raise up him who dies and what is allah saying bala verily surely for sure wa'dan alayhi haqqan yes he will raise them up ولكن اكثر الناس لا يعلمون اللهم لا تجعلنا منهم الله do not make us of this majority who is not aware you know make us make us of those who have ilm people of ilm people of knowledge like you mashallah who are taking time to not to be scared but rather they want to be prepared in this meeting which is for sure going to happen and look at the other side they are even taking woes wa aqsamu billahi jahda imanihim they are like you know they they take big big oaths so here remind yourself that there are some sarcastic answers to the objections on resurrection you know when you keep explaining to somebody you keep trying to tell them this is not right this is not right this is not right and the other person is not and the other person is not able to understand then after that you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know this here is like a sarcasm here so azajru wa tawbihu ala shubahat al munkirin some sarcastic answers to the objections on resurrection so here you will see the tone that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for them so resurrection will occur on the day when these people this kind of people will say ah to where should i flee Do you think escape is going to be a solution? Can we run away in this world or in the hereafter? We cannot. You know, we can we can temporarily go out of a certain situation by making any excuse, but on the day of judgment, this is going to be the situation. Yes, alu ayana yawm al-qiyamah, fa idha bariq al-basar wa khasaf al-qamar wa jumi al-shams wa al-qamar, yqul al-insanu yawm izin. ain al mafar highlight this word with yourself ask yourself this statement allah protect me from saying this statement that allah where should i run away kalla la wazar ila rabbika yawma iz yawma izin al mustaqar so asking when is that resurrection day to be but on the day when the eyesight is by fear confounded and the moon is darkened and the sun and moon are brought together massive events happening as we saw in the minor and the major signs of the day of judgment on that day will man exclaim whither to flee ain al mafar where should i run away and but nay no refuge for you o man with the sustainer on that day the journeys end will be so smart people like you mashallah they go to allah subhanahu wa taala in their life everybody will go to allah after their life everybody nobody you know no exception will be made but the smart ones like you will go to the day of judgment um you know go to allah in their life so let's see what is a fact and what is fake so resurrection will occur on the day when his highness remember this is sarcasm this is like you know when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really angry with these people and they will be served with cactus and boiling drink sometimes as a child i would wonder you know listening about jahannam and about these hot drinks and things over there and i would be like you know allah is so merciful how can this be possible but now when you see in the world what some people do to some others you are like sadaqa wa'dahu allah they deserve this and much more so in surah al-waqia there is a detailed description you know so salam would recite this surah and what's happening here wa qanu yaquluna a itha mitna wa kunna turaban wa izaman a inna lam amabuthun that's a question 
أو آباؤنا الأولون So when we are dead and we are like, you know, mud and bones, will we be resurrected? And what about our parents who, used, who, who came before us? قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ Say indeed the first ones and the last ones. لَمَجْمُعُونَ إِلَى مِيقَاتِ يَوْمِ مَعْلُومٍ All of them will be gathered back on that day. ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ أَيُّهَا الضَّالُّونَ الْمُكَذِّبُونَ لَآكِلُونَ مِنْ شَجَرٍ مِنْ ذَكُومٍ Akala means to eat and they will be eating from these places. فَمَالِئُونَ مِنْ هَلْبُطُونَ فَشَارِبُونَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْحَمِيمِ فَشَارِبُونَ شُرْبَ الْحِيمِ هَذَا نُذُلُهُمْ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ This is the day of judgment. This is the day of resurrection. So what's happening? That the denying people, you will have to eat from the tree of Zakum and to fill it with it, the bellies and on top of it, you will have to drink boiling water and to drink like camels suffering from the disease of overthirst. Subhanallah. Like they want, like, you know, the thirst will be made on them and then they would be, you know, like... Yes, but there is like I got disease and I want you to research on this, subhanAllah, that when you are really, really wanting to thirst. And you know, I was talking about like, sometimes you look at this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this will be their welcome entertainment on the day of requital. You think it, it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with them? What kind of tone do you see here? That this is a, you know, like, this is like extreme psychasm on such people. But, you know, as I mentioned, when you look at this, and the way some people are acting right now, what they do to people, think about it. Even some, like even the, 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 the animals are better right now compared to what some people are doing to the humanity right now. Millions of people starving to death, not giving them water, closing them, chaining them, not letting them run away even anywhere. And then, you know, like uh, doing genocide and whatnot. SubhanAllah. So this is a day that Allah SWT will recompense them for what they used to do. Now, resurrection will occur on the day when His Highness type, this is again sarcasm for such people, will have asked for abode. Which one? The hell. Do you think this is fake or do you think this is a fact? What do you guys think? The bad people, they will be thrown in hell. What do you think? Is that a fact or is that fake? All right, so let's see. Then we have to give a dalil for it. When somebody asks you, like, how do you know that? Then you can tell them. Then in Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَسْأَلُونَ أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الدِّينَ يَوْمَهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ يُفْتَنُونَ ذُقُوا فِتْنَتُكُمْ هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ They who mockingly ask, you know, they are just laughing, jesting about it. When is the day of judgment, you know, be a day when they'll be sorely tried by the fire and they'll be told, taste this trial. You know, zuku is when, when I invite you to a party and I have like a fancy meal and everything ready for you. And then I say zuk, like, you know, enjoy. That's the terminology Allah SWT is using here. Zuku, fitna tukum. Taste this trial. It is that for which you were hastily coming forth. Ajal means you are hurrying for that. You brought it, you know, you really wanted to see this. So another one, resurrection will occur on the day when the face of elegant will get distorted on seeing the end of his bad deeds. What do you think? Today you are like so honorable. Today you have everything in your control. You are like the superpower. You have, you know, you control and make decisions. But on that day, their face will be distorted. What do you think? This, this is a fact or this is fake will that be true on the day of judgment hmm? yes you agree all right so again we need a dalil for that right so this is uh, the names of allah also like al rafi and al khafid as well some people who are so pathetic miserable in this life their levels could be so high in with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in suratul mulk that we are asked to recite every night between if we have not done that yet this is the best investment we can do for our grave inshallah this is going to be a companion and will come or you know to plead for us on the day of judgment
Allahu Akbar. And they say, when will this promise be fulfilled? If you are true, say, the knowledge of that day is only with Allah and I'm only a plain warner. So next time somebody is, you know, doing, uh, you know, a conversation and they are putting you down or things, your task is just to convey, not to convince. So you just tell them that I'm only a plain warner. Then once they will see it approaching, the faces of the disbelievers will be turned awkward and it will be said, this is what you were calling for. This is what you were like inviting for. Subhanallah. Another one, resurrection will occur on the day when the delicate face of honorable will be roasted on fire. He will be flogged and none will be there to inquire after him. Such horrible consequences, you know, for denial. And, uh, you know, may Allah protect us to be from these people. In Surah Al-Anbiya, if they but knew they who are bent on denying the truth, there will come a day when they will not be able to ward off from their faces, nor from their backs, and not find any assistance. So put your own name over there. Next time, you're about to sin. You know, something really attracts you and you're like, oh, it's not a big deal. Allah is merciful. You know, then remember these verses, put yourself in that situation and ask yourself that, am I doing this? Like, you know, mom will save me, dad will save me. Somebody else will come to my rescue or am I mindful of my decisions and my consequences? Because this day is for sure coming. So the action item for myself is that that day, there is no other helper other than Allah. So better invest my time with him. Hasbi Allah, name al wakil name al mawla wa name al nasir Now resurrection will occur on the day when his majesty will be disgraced and will call for destruction. So these people who were acting, you know, very haughty and, uh, you know, high, what's happening with them is it when we have died and become dust and bones that we shall be raised again and even our fathers of a four time this is surah to safat you see this topic how many times it's repeating the entire quran say yes and you shall be disgraced too so it will be only a single castigating call and all of a sudden they will begin to see and they will be saying woe to us this is the day of retribution i wanted you to do a practical like experiment with this right now so hold a piece of paper in front of you just grab a piece of paper hold it next to you and stretch your arms and hold the paper like this okay i want you to think that this is this paper is your dunya this life okay and the rest everything is your akhira all right now what i want you to do is most of the people are not holding it with their hands extended like this they are holding this paper like this. So bring it closer to your face like this. Just hold this paper, bring it closer, 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 all the way close to my eyes, maybe just an inch away from my nose. Can I see anything else outside now? No. Can I hear the answer louder? Can I see anything outside now? No. No, absolutely not. Why? Because I'm too focused on my dunya, my test today, what I'm going to eat today, who is gonna, I'm going to meet today, uh, who I'm going to make happy today, uh, what I'm going to wear today, what do I want to shop today, how do I want to sleep today, uh, what do I want to watch today. I'm just too focused on this, what's happening on my social media, who is liking my post, who is doing that. I'm just too focused. And all of a sudden, keep this paper here, and then what happens? The angel of death comes. This is gone. This is gone. Now, all of a sudden, what is appearing to me now? The eternity, the forever is in front of me. But ya laytani, where did I spend my focus? Just on this dunya, dunya, dunya. Had I put my focus correctly, had this paper be like the Quran for me, then I would have been seeing all that, you know, and it would just have been ilmul yaqeen now, right? Then I already knew about it, that I already knew that angel of death will be coming. Now, as soon as angel of death will come, this will go away. And when I see the angel of death, had I been preparing for it, I'll be like, yes! <laughs> I'm done. No more cooking, cleaning, no more, you know, um, you know, learning, no more nothing. And I'm ready to meet my Allah SWT. I'll be so happy. I'll be like, yes, let's go. Right. And if, if I've been preparing and I know like I've invested in Suratul Mulk, my grave is, you know, waiting for me and it has, you know, my companion there and it will become inshallah garden of paradise. I'll be so happy. I'll be like, yes. But if I was just engrossed in this dunya and this was all this dunya, 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 and all of a sudden this taken away, this whole will seem shocking to me. Oh my God, this many angels, an angel coming to take my soul. I will just be blown away. And what will I do? Naturally, I would like to scream and cry and do things. Ya waylana hada yaumuddin. Woe to us. This is the day of retribution. This experiment I did with a person who was running the Quran exhibition in Washington, D.C. 
This is probably five years ago. And MashaAllah, he did such a beautiful job in the capital of USA. He has this Quran exhibition going on in uh, Washington, D.C., close to Smithsonian Museums. I absolutely loved it. And I asked him, I said, you know, you've been dealing with, he had all these manuscripts and everything he had gotten and things like that. But the, the way these things were presented to people was some of things were very objectionable. Why? Because we don't know our own Quran. If somebody stands up in front of you and say these ayahs, you will take it because you don't know the meanings of them, right? So I explained some of them and then I had a good conversation with him and I asked him I did this experiment with him and I asked him did this any worse touched you did it help you make a decision for yourself and he is like no I just have to do this deliverable and that deliverable and I have to make sure that this exhibition is a success and this and that but it didn't help him to connect himself to the creator and that was something which was most important so resurrection will occur on the day when his majesty type will be kicked and knocked down into the hell another beautiful ayahs from surah to sajda right alhamdulillah and what's happening in nasinakum you know you forgot us so now zuhu look at these words that are coming again and again zuhu taste the azabul khul bima kuntum ta'malun innama yu'minu bi ayatina alladhina idha dhukiru highlight these words please that indeed those who believe in our verses allahumma ja'alna minhum when they are recited to them kharru sujjadaw they fall down prostrating wa sabbahu and they glorify allah with his praise wa hum la yastakbirun they do not they don't feel arrogant so even when they sit with the book they are sitting like humbly they are not sitting like oh yeah i keep saying it's just a repetition no 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 they are very humble they make practical action items for themselves that tajafa junubuhum anil madaji yad'una rabbahum khawfan wa tamaw wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun they you know alternate on their sides their sides remain apart from their beds they in the night they are weeping and crying and calling allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the day they are racing towards good deeds they call their lord with fear and hope khawfan wa taman so ask yourself do i call allah with fear and hope who do i have that connection with allah do i stay away from my bed for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have i ever been awake just to do something for the sake of allah and then what they do whatever allah has spent to them they give out in charity of what allah has given to them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of these people inshallah now resurrection will occur on the day the respected sir will turn up in a docile manner on the very first reprimand what do you think fact or fake Mm, so again you have to bring a dalil so this is the last one we're going to do together yaquluna a inna lamarduduna fil hafira these the infidel say are we going to be brought back to our formal state of life is it when we are turned into decayed bones they say if so that will be a harmful homecoming you know a person they, he was having a conversation with an atheist he said you know let's see let's say you know, let's say the day of judgment is false and Allah had not asked us or this lady, was, she was like, maybe Allah did not ask us to cover and all that, right? So let's say if that was true on the day of judgment, if it was not needed, we did something extra, so we will pass. But somebody who was supposed to do it and they didn't do it and they find out that yes, it was supposed to be done, then this will be their words. It will be, you know, harmful homecoming. In fact, it will be only a single harsh voice and in no time they'll be brought into the plain of Hashar. Zajratun wahida fa'idahum bisahira. Allahu Akbar. You know, yesterday there was a person fleeing from this massacre which is happening and somebody was trying to record him. And you know what he said? He said, do not need to record me. You know why? Because this is only for me and my Allah. I don't want the world to pity to them. And you know, one of the statement was that, you know, the no need for making a Salatul Janazah on us, you know, in, in, in Gaza. They said, you know, we are alive. You know, once we pass away, we are Shaheed and we are in the way of Allah. So we are alive. The rest of the Muslims are dead who are just sitting in their comfort zones and they don't feel anything so i'm going to close with this definition of stupidity okay on this in this session which is about the doubts and fears you know about the doubts and objections people did and please check your own self this all about is is point to our own self and check for our own self that where do i stand with what is my heart and where is my situation so who is somebody who is benign like who is somebody who is naive who knows the truth who sees the truth but he still wants to believe in the lies and that's the majority of the world he wants they want to live like this may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and write this in big that denying truth 
does not change the facts. We saw so many facts together in this session. So if somebody wants to deny it, no, 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 there is no such thing as fire, there's no such thing as Jannah and Jahannam, and we are the chosen ones, and no, 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 we are not going to come back in this world, this is the only world. Yes, I want to live YOLO, you only live once, and I just want to eat, drink, and be merry. Chill, man, it's okay, do whatever. That's the slogans you will see outside, right? That's the calls, and they sound obviously very easy to follow. Who wants, who wants to take the effort to make wudu five times a day, and you know, study, and learn, and want to educate themselves? Then tell yourself that Denying truth does not change the facts. If I, if I choose not to tune in what's going on in the world, that doesn't change the situation. I will still be asked, what was I doing at that time? SubhanAllah. So dream it, dua it, do it. Uh, don't be scared. Be prepared. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those you know, who are not on the loser side on the day of judgment, inshallah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min diqi dunya wa diqi yawm al qiyamah. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the distress of this world and the distress of the day of resurrection. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us keep, stay steadfast and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us educate with wisdom you know, to those who are not aware. So whenever you get an opportunity to educate somebody, to clarify their doubts, please do it with wisdom and with references, inshallah. May Allah help us in our journey, increase us all in our beneficial ailment amal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.